Audio Sync, take one. Hello viewers and a very warm welcome to another episode. This week we're going to be taking a look at this all-in-one PC from none other than Sony. This was sold to me as spares and the hard drive had been removed. Uh, upon its arrival I also noticed that the bezel had been broken off across the top there. Uh, I think there's three three lugs at the front there with screws that go from behind it was broken off at all those points. Um, I've since glued that part back on. Um, also there was a screw rattling around inside and the rest of the screws were in fact missing um, along with the back. Uh, the back cover there which is just more for cosmetic use. Um, I'm not sure if it got broke in transit or it's just um, sloppy taking apart by the previous owner to remove the hard drive trying to gain access to it. There was no power supply included in the cell but me being a bio collector I was sure to have one somewhere and after a rummage around through my spares I eventually found one. Um, it's actually a standard 19.5 volt laptop power supply charger um, but with this being an all-in-one desktop computer it's going to need slightly higher amperage than usual. Um, I think the one I found had was about 3 amps. Usually for a laptop they're around about 2 amps. Along with its decorative back it's also missing its wired mouse and keyboard uh, which is quite unusual for Sony to have a wired mouse and keyboard because normally they're wireless. Um, and to be quite honest with you I find them quite a pain in the neck. Um, the keyboards of my previous um, machines have always been taking four AA batteries and they tend to run down rather quickly. And then of course you need two batteries for the mouse as well. So I'm um, uh, not too fast that the keyboard and mouse are actually missing for this. Um, as you do I placed a lo very low bid just to sort of mark it in my um, history on eBay and I actually forgot about it. Um, and I actually ended up winning it for just £2.77 not including postage. Back in the day when I worked at the Sony centres, um, I remember when this computer came out. It was around about 2009. It retailed at about £640. Um, I remember being quite disappointed with the design of it actually. Um, I always used to get quite excited when Sony brought out new computers. Um, Sony was quite an innovative company back in the day. Um, but uh, as time went on, sort of to the late 2000s, they stopped sending to be so flamboyant with their designs. Um, they started getting a little bit too basic for me to be quite honest with you. And when you look at previous models. So what did £640 actually get you back in 2009 for a computer? Well for starters with this model you've got a 20.1 inch X Black LCD panel with a multiple lamp technology and a screen resolution of 1680 by 1050 uh, not 4 HD, but uh, you've still got 720p there with this Intel Core 2 Duo CPU E7200 running at 2.53 GHz and 3 GB of RAM of which 2.86 GB is usable. Uh, I'm assuming the rest of that is saved for the graphics card. And the graphics card is an Intel GMA X4500 HD graphics. It came with a 500 gig hard drive and weighing in at 8.5 kilos it's not as portable as some other computers. Also boasting a 1.3 megapixel motion eye video camera built onto the front there, um, which is a good for things like Zoom and Skype. On the right side is a DV writer, while on the left side you have a SD card slot and Sony's Magic 8 memory card slots with two USB ports along with a 3.5mm headphone socket, microphone and line out jacks. There is also a wireless switch which is easy to use without having to look around the side. At the back we find a further three USB ports, a mini firewire port, power switch on the top, um, ethernet sockets and best of all a digital audio output connection which allows you to take advantage of the Realtek audio card by plugging it into your home cinema system for the best possible sound quality. It does have a couple of stereo speakers built in across the bottom there uh, however, they're not, they're not brilliant. They do sound okay, but I have heard better. It's a problem with these computers. The slimmer they get them, they seem to start losing sound quality. So, will it work? As I've already stated, um, the hard drive is missing. Um, so I need to dig one of those out for it. I think I've got a 500 gig um, Seagate drive somewhere. Um, the thing when you buy these second-hand computers, you just don't know the history. Um, you don't really know what you're getting yourself into. Um, a lot of the time it's just um, people are genuinely upgrading. Um, they'll put their old computer into storage in the loft or in the basement. Um, sometimes they'll remove the hard drive as it's happened with this one uh, for data protection. 
Um, sometimes it's quite a pain actually when they do remove the hard drive, especially with the Sony's, because um, the restore partition is hidden on the hard drive because you don't get uh, restore discs while well, you didn't with these um, from around sort of 2007, I think it was onwards. Um, so trying to get all the drivers for these things can be quite a nightmare because Sony long, no longer supports them, unfortunately. And they took them all down a few years ago now. But uh, sometimes you're lucky and you do actually find the drivers for them. Um, but today I'm going to be installing Windows 10 on this. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, it will find everything we need. I guess we'll find out as we go down the path of installing everything. And uh, maybe we'll find out any annoyances along the way of any problems it may have. Hopefully there won't be any. Uh, one of the things I have noted already about this computer, which is quite annoying, is that once you've applied power to it, it comes straight on before you even press the power button. Uh, my initial thoughts were maybe there's something in the BIOS, um, because I've seen in some BIOS settings where you can have a resume power in the, in the event of a power cut. Uh, but unfortunately, I've had a look in the BIOS on this, and I must say it's the most sparsest BIOS I've ever seen. Um, and there's hardly anything there at all, and that, unfortunately that feature is not there either. So with all that in mind, um, let's uh, pop the back off, which is already unscrewed. Um, have a look inside and then we'll fit the hard drive. That's the only screw the case actually had. And here we are, the insides of it, and I must say I was very pleasantly surprised at just how clean and tidy it was inside. Uh, very often with these old computers, they're usually caked in dust or debris from whatever environment it's come from. But on this occasion, it's absolutely immaculate inside, it's just so clean. There's no dust on the motherboard whatsoever. The fans seem clean. There's a main fan there, I assume the other one's for the CPUs. Dual inverter board there. That's the DVD-ROM drive. And here we have the hard drive caddy. Uh, again, there's only one screw on this as well. Luckily, um, I do keep spare screws from things uh, in fact, I have, I've been keeping screws since I was about 15 years old. I've been taking things apart that long. And I keep spares, because quite often with second-hand things, the screws do, uh, on, do uh, occasionally end up missing. Not quite sure what that sticker was from. Usually a sticker like that, or a little bit of tape like that, is uh, to, to hold wires down. And here's that Seagate drive I had. I knew I had one somewhere. Um, I can't remember how I came across this one, I should think it might have been out of an old PC. It's a 500 gigabyte, so uh, that will do nicely for this project. Just need to make sure I put it in the caddy the right way around now before I screw it all in place. It has four rubber mounts uh, around the sides to help reduce any vibration. And there's my spare screws. I've already been through my stash and uh, selected an amount. That's it, hard drive in place in the caddy, just a case of plugging it all back in and then uh, securing it back down again. And this hard drive is untested so uh, hopefully it'll be okay. If not I'll have to find something else. I remember when these all-in-one PCs started making an appearance, um, I was quite surprised because obviously before this you always had a separate desktop tower and a separate monitor. Uh, and the early ones were Pentium 4s and used to get ever so hot and uh, the fans were always very loud on them. It's 
So I've got Windows 10 here on a USB flash drive, and I'm rather messing about with a DVD ROM. Um, plus, I can't find my uh, Windows 10 installation disk. So we'll boot from the uh, USB flash drive. This should only take about half an hour, hopefully. Just got to go into the BIOS and tell it to look for the USB flash drive to boot from that first, rather than the hard drive or DVD ROM. I think the reason the PC is coming on automatically um, is because the battery backup may be flat. Because later on down the line, I noticed the time was incorrect after the computer had been switched back off and then on again. So here we are back. Uh, it's been a few days now. I've been using this. Um, now after Windows 10 finally went in, um, well I say finally, it went in okay, but it took all day long to do its updates. And I mean, it really did take all day long. In fact, I was getting to a point where I thought it's just going to work at all for me with Windows 10. Um, if it was going to be that slow doing its updates, would it be usable all as a web browser even? Uh, but uh, sure enough, once everything had been updated and gone in, it was all okay in the end. Um, it did work okay as a web browser. Um, I've been streaming music with iTunes. Um, but uh, the biggest gripe I've got with it, unfortunately, there is no control for brightness. Um, I've looked everywhere in the settings, there's just nothing there at all. Um, I've checked the um, device manager, had a look in there. And sure enough, there is a driver installed for the graphics card. Now, I don't think it's a generic driver. Or, or is it? Maybe it is, I don't know. Um, I've looked online for drivers, as you do. And I found all the original drivers for things like Windows Vista and Windows 7. Uh, but unfortunately, none of those are working. Um, all I get is that message from Windows saying um, Windows is um, determined that uh, the best driver suited for this device is already installed. And it won't even let you install it. Um, the other option you've got, obviously, is to um, change the brightness in that power save mode it's got. Not power save, nighttime mode. Uh, where it dims everything down ever so slightly and gives that yellow tinge like a sunset. But even with that installed, uh, or with that running, it's still too bright. In fact, you probably could use sunglasses as that bright in the late evening when you're using it at night. But during the day, it's okay. Um, streaming okay with, with, uh, with the iTunes, that's working fine. Um, but unfortunately, the visualizer is not working properly. It stutters about, uh, I think it's the classic visualizer, one of the two. Um, yeah, in fact, it won't work at all. It works for one, but not the other, um, which is obviously pointing the finger towards the graphics card issue, uh, which is a real shame, really, because uh, that, that's pretty much anything's let it down. Everything else went in okay, all installed. Sound, wireless, um, DVD ROM drive went in okay, uh, the web camera went in all right. I haven't actually tested um, the DVD ROM drive yet, but I don't see why it wouldn't work. Um, it's actually a device I still miss on later computers. Uh, sometimes you've got old software you want to try out when you're putting different operating systems in and uh, of course you have to resort to using a USB um, flash drive instead. Uh, one of the other drivers that didn't work actually now I think about it was the memory stick driver which didn't surprise me at all. Um, the SD card works fine though which is what I use mostly these days anyway. Um, a base driver didn't go in uh, which I managed to find online um, along with a PCI bridge adapter I think it said that didn't work either. Uh, but as, as I say, apart from that, everything else seems to be working fine. Um, considering this computer is 13 years old now, it's still usable. Um, it just goes to show, you know, there is still um, life left in these old PCs yet. Even if it's just a web browser. Um, now, originally, this computer shipped with uh, Windows Vista, which gets a, a lot of bad uh, rep. Um, I'm not surprised, though, to be honest with you, because uh, it was a very big operating system, as we all know, and it took up a lot of... Um, a lot of uh, system memory. Um, there are out there that you still can get the drivers for this for Windows Vista. Um, and all the uh, via software as well that used to bundle in with these computers, or the bloatware, um, some people say. So one day I may go back down the road of installing Windows Vista on this just to see what it was like. Um, get all the original Sony via software working. Because um, there was quite some interesting apps uh, back in the day that used to get with them. But for now I'm just going to leave it with Windows 10. Uh, to at least make it usable, so it's um, partially safe online, at least. Uh, we're using an old operating system these days, just a big no-no really for going, going online at least. 
but it would be interesting to try out the graphics card capabilities with some uh, old games from the time period using Windows Vista. Um, in fact, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to try Windows 7 in it either. Uh, that takes up a lot less system resources. Well, I guess that just about brings me to the end of this video. Um, it's been very interesting again. I hope you've enjoyed watching with me. Um, I always like taking a trip down memory lane and looking back at all technology that I used to sell back in the day in the Sony Center. Uh, technology that I couldn't afford then, but I can afford to buy it now, now that it's obsolete. Well, I guess that just leaves to say, as always, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll be seeing you. And if you did enjoy watching this video, you may want to take a look at some of my other videos on similar themes. I'm always buying something on eBay, some old piece of technology and trying to repair it. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.